Welcome back, Razorback fans, to our fourth and final episode of our year in review with Hunter Yurichek. Now, in this episode, we are going to be starting off with baseball, who despite all the injuries and the challenges that they faced this year, still had a pretty impressive season. They hosted an NCAA regional, they won the SEC regular season title, and Dave Van Horn won coach of the year as well. What did you think about their performance? Well, you, you think about even before the season when you lose your Friday night starter in Jackson Wiggins, and then you think it you can't get any worse, and then you lose a couple of more pitchers, you lose some position players um, that lost some games, and then you know Peyton Stovall, who's a returning second baseman. We, we lose him for the better part of the last six weeks of the season. And to win a share of the SEC regular season title, which is an incredible 30-game grind against the best competition in the country, Dave Van Horn deserved to be the coach of the year in our conference because of the job he did in really holding this team together. And it really, you know, you talk about the cliche next man up, it really was that for our baseball program this year. I remember coming into the suite several times and I had to pull out the roster to who is playing at second base right <laughs> exactly. now. Exactly. Or who's that coming in from the bullpen because mm -hmm. it just was that. Um, and he just, um, him and his staff did a great job convincing those young men that, hey, you're, you're here yeah. for a reason. The yeah, for and, sure. And I mean, I feel like with Van Horn, people don't get to see, they see the serious side of him, the good, great coach that he is. But you don't really get to see a lot of his humor because he does have some. Oh, he's got incredible humor. And, you know, I enjoy sharing a glass of wine with him. And if you get him talking, yeah. um, I mean, he, he will tell story after story after story <laughs> uh, well into the night. And he just got some phenomenal stories. And his recall is mm -hmm. amazing as well. Well, we did have him mic'd up at one of their practices during the season. And he told a great story. So, of course, we've got to show it to you real quick. There's been an owl up there, about five or six years, you know, running on the warning track, and I and I saw him, but there was an owl sitting right up there. I, t I have a picture of my phone of it. Really? So I was nervous. So when I would run, I would watch him. When I get over, you nervous? Were you gonna swing down and get you? Come down and get a little talon <laughs> on the back of my neck. So when I would go past him, I would run seriously almost backwards. Yeah. Because I was waiting for that guy to come after me. You ever he, been attacked by a bird running? No. That owl. I don't know how big he was, but he looked big sitting up there, so I know they he do was have big. Balls. And they're kind of nutty. Ow, he might have thought, hey, I'm going to go get me some of that old guy right there. I've never even crossed my <laughs> mind when I've been running, like, oh, this bird doesn't attack No, me. no. But it's birds will have. I've had it's a bird attack me recruiting. I parked under this tree in Texas, <laughs> and, I, and, uh, and I came out, and that thing started hitting on me. I guess it had some babies up in there. It was one of those mockingbirds or whatever. <laughs> had that happen yeah, too. Bigger. Yeah, I've had it happen in this state too, but yeah, they'll go after you a little bit. Well, thankfully the owl <laughs> didn't go after him, yeah. but it seems like we've got some wildlife that just always seems to pop up at, at Bob Walker Stadium. <laughs> it's kind of like a zoo out there for sure. I mean, that, that, that uh, I was out at the stadium down along the uh, left field wall and there was a mm -hmm. snapping turtle that, a turtle, oh, that yeah. had made its way into the stadium. And uh, <laughs> Coach Van Horn was out there with the shovel and we were scooping this thing into a bucket. I was oh, just an man. observer. And uh, I mean, that was a priceless video yeah. as well. We'll have to dig that back up. And <laughs> uh, we've had raccoons in the stadium. Yep. Uh, Dave's wife, Karen, had a raccoon in, in her suite uh, yep. this year, and so uh, we <laughs> may need to call in Jack Hanna to uh, talk about the wildlife that's uh, around Baumwalker Stadium. I mean, everyone's just got to be on their toes when they come in there. Great but, games, might see an animal or But two. that is vintage <laughs> Dave Van Horn right there, that story and him just telling that within detail, for Not sure. to mention, you know, he, he saw it when he was on his run, so he takes laps around he does. the yes. inside of his, the field, which is really impressive as well. Five, six in the morning, I think, what he said? It, it, uh, he loves to run the warning tracks. Well, good for him. I probably won't join him on that. <laughs> but we do have some great in-game interviews with him as well. What do you think about in-game interviews, by the way? Well, I, I know they're a necessary evil. I'm yeah. not sure coaches around the country really enjoy those. I'm not sure um, they do you know, either. if it's between innings and you do that, but when you put that headphone on and then the game starts back, mm -hmm. and if things aren't going well for your team, we've seen those interviews go wrong <laughs> a time or two. We've got a couple examples actually, <laughs> but first we're going to get to Van Horn's interview, which was, I'll just let it speak for itself. 
hard, man. These dudes showed up every weekend and just play. Look at oh, them, just oh, like that, that, right there. I mean, are you kidding me? That's my backup. <laughs> really? That's my backup. No, he's not a backup. You know, here's what I tell the guys: you're not a backup. You're you're a future starter. Yeah. So you talked about earlier Peyton yeah. Snowfall being out. Peyton Holt stepped up for him. And he made that incredible play, and of course, Van Horn. I mean, just think of, of Peyton Holt the, the filling in in yeah. the season he had, and um, you know he missed those, some games in the regional force, and I think that was a mm -hmm. key when we talk about trying to. He was such an offensive and defensive spark force, and so he goes down in that regional, and then we're kind of we've got our backup to the backup, right? You know. Also, we had a couple of interviews with Jim Schlossnagel, in-game interviews that, like you mentioned earlier, didn't exactly, I don't think he was a fan of how it all got caught up in the moment of the actual game that was going on. He said it like wasn't his call, and then last night they, they, oh, Jesus. Wow. Oh, baby. That'll put Slavens all the way to third. Uh, the prescription been refilled? No. I'm going to run to CVS right now. I'll let you run. You can just hear him, oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was at that game, so I had not seen that one. There's one yeah. from the SEC tournament that. Uh, That's another good one yeah, as well. For I sure. think we, we also do have. Give us two or three one. good innings. Um, if that can continue to swing. And let's. I have bad luck in these interviews. No, yeah, you got it. Look. Oh, see, it was. I told well, you. All right, listen. Okay, we'll right, talk see, to you. See, see, see you later. Have a good talking with you, Sloss. <laughs> Honestly, at this point, I don't blame him. I yeah. take the headset off too. Right. <laughs> Especially since both of those instances were against Arkansas, exactly. right? You know? He just had some, and you could see him walking in the dugout like, yep, nope, not doing that again. Not doing that again, for <laughs> sure. Well, Van Horn, we've got to get back to him. Coach of the year. Just really impressive what he's been able to do with this program. He's been there for over 20 years. What are your thoughts on him and how he has helped develop the Arkansas baseball team? Well, I mean, he, he followed in the, the footsteps of a legend. I mean, we've had two baseball coaches at the University of Arkansas in 50 years, you know, Coach DeBryan and then Coach Van Horn. And, um, I mean, our program year in and year out is a nationally competitive, nationally ranked program. And you don't have to worry about if we're going to reload or we're going to be there because we just are under his leadership. I mean, he has a definitive program that you're going to have to, if you're an opposing team in the SEC or across the country, that you know when Arkansas comes to town or if you come to Baumwalker Stadium that you're going to be in for a fight against a really good baseball program. And that's what Dave Van Horn has done. And um, He can be our baseball coach as long as he wants to. In fact, um, I hope he outlasts me because I don't want to have to hire another baseball coach <laughs> because there's not going to be another Dave Van Horn. Yeah. There just isn't. I mean, we're fortunate that Dave Van Horn was able to follow Norm DeBryant. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that we'll find another one like Coach Van Horn. Well, speaking of coaches also, Courtney Diefel for the softball team has done an incredible job with that program. This year they hosted the SEC tournament, which was fun. They also earned a national seed and hosted the NCAA regional third straight year as well. How do you feel about that program and the way that it's growing under Courtney Diefel? Amazing. She, she's done an incredible job from the day she took over to where our program is now. It's another one of those programs that you now know year in and year out you're going to have to contend with um, not only in the SEC but, but nationally. And I mean, she lost a great deal of talent off of her 2022 team. And the fact that we're able to finish in the third, fourth place in, in the SEC during the regular season, host another regional, uh, just a phenomenal job by her because she's built a program that's going to stand the test of time here at the University of Arkansas. We locked her up last year, um, and she's going to be our uh, softball coach for the foreseeable future, and I'm very excited about that. Yeah, I'm sure fans are excited about that as well. Absolutely. And, and you kind of touched on it this season. They, they had lost a lot of talent from last year's roster, but they had some young talent show up, and you know you also had some transfers come in as well. Another 41 season for this team. What did you think about the year that they had? I thought they had another great year. I mean, when you can win 40 softball games, host a regional, finish in the top half of the SEC, you've had a successful season. No, we didn't win the SEC, but I think that's going to be a tough challenge. I think you look every year, there's somebody different that's winning the SEC in the sport of baseball, indoor softball. So uh, what she's able to do to keep us at the top half of this league and um, in the top 10 to 15 nationally is phenomenal. 
Well, the girls have some fun in the dugout during these games. They and do. we actually got kind of an inside scoop, learned about all their rally props and stuff, but it wasn't until I think it was the NCAA tournament when, or SEC tournament, when they brought out a new rally prop that they had. Have you heard of Brickiana? I don't think I have. I think okay. it's going to be news to me as well. <laughs> Holly Rowe <laughs> gave a great description of what it is. Guys, I can confirm it is a rally brick. They did find it one day. They feel like it's been giving them special powers to build on something oh. special. Do you get it? Foundation. It is definitely yep. a rally brick. Yep. <laughs> build on something. So they found this brick in their dugout and they drew a face on it and called it Brickiana. Right. Birthday, name, everything. What do you think about rally props like that? Whatever it takes yep. to give you the confidence to win a game. <laughs> I know our women's soccer team, I think two years ago on their run to the Elite Eight, they had a penguin that they gotten from Penguin Did Edge they? and they carried that around with them from <laughs> venue to venue and that became kind of their rally prize. So whatever your team can rally around and mm -hmm. make you believe that you can win and have success, I'm all for it. Also, I want to touch on the new season coming up next year. Coach Dipole has done a great job recruiting some great talent. You've got some new transfers in from Auburn and Mississippi State. What are your thoughts on kind of the potential that that team has for next year? Well, what's really neat to see is especially when it's an interconference transfer that uh, young women come here to Bogle Park, to our campus, see how Coach Dipole and her staff interacts with their girls and have the desire to come to the University of Arkansas and be a part of our softball program. You saw that you know, a couple of years with KB Sides transferring from Alabama. That continues to happen. You mentioned transfer from Auburn, transfer from Mississippi State. And I think it's a testament to Courtney and how she runs this program, the perception of this program outside of Northwest Arkansas, that young women want to come play for her and be here at our campus and at the University of Arkansas. Well, we're going to move on to golf. Are you a big golfer? What do you mean by big golfer? <laughs> do you like golfing? <laughs> I, I love golf. Golf, uh, the game of golf has not been kind to me. Okay. Um, I'm not very talented in that regard. <laughs> I don't, uh, no one will ever accuse the athletic director at the University of Arkansas of playing too much golf. That's, that they that's, play around that's with a fair me, point. Sure. <laughs> it's like, we need to get you out there with, with Coach McMakin from a Yeah, he's time. never, by the way, him and Sean have never invited me out there. Oh. Now, they have been out at the Blessings, and they've seen me go out there with my boys and tee off, and that may be a reason they've never invited <laughs> to play with me. So Maybe one day. Yeah. We'll, we'll get it on we'll the books. We'll see. But the men's team this year, and the women's team, actually, they both competed in the NCAA tournament. What are your thoughts on those two programs and, and how they did this year? Yeah, Shauna and Brad do, do a great job, and, you know, we had a veteran – group on the men's side. That, that group had been together for a long time. Uh, they had some ebbs and flows to the season and finally put it together towards the end of the season. When you think about the, the regional that they had in South Carolina, just kind of blew the field away and ended up finishing second to Georgia Tech and had their best, played their best golf of the season. Then went out and into the NCAA championship after the first round, we're in second place. Uh, got a tough draw the second day and had to play in the afternoon heat and didn't do quite as well then, but um, ended up finishing 17th in that tournament and um, needed to finish in the top 15 to advance, but uh, they had a great, great season, and uh, there's a lot of those guys that will be missed. And then our women's team, you know, advancing to the NCAA tournament, and they finished six in their regional. Um, the top five advanced. They missed advancing by one shot, or they would advance also to the national championship. And so both of those programs are in great shape and have great leadership, and their future is bright for both of them. And one of the really neat things about this season was that you had Mateo get to have the opportunity to go play at the Masters. It was. How, how cool is that to see one of your student athletes on a stage like that? Uh, it was really cool and I had the, the privilege of going out to the Masters um, to see him play his oh, Friday wow. round and he teed off in the group in front of Tiger Woods and wow. so the crowd at the first hole when he was teeing off was unbelievable. I, I told him it was for him. Yeah, you know, <laughs> of course. Like, it was Tiger was in the next group, but uh, it was pretty cool to see him. Mm -hmm. What a great experience for him uh, to play that course and to play with professionals. And, and that's his dream and his vision yeah. for his golf game that he'll be playing that on a regular basis here in the future. And also for the women, the good news for them is that they're returning every single player for next season as well, which is great. 
Yeah, and that, they'll be a veteran team just like our men were this year. They, they've got a couple of, of additions that I know that Coach Taylor is, is really excited to have um, joining our program. And so I think both of those programs, again, they're in really good shape. And I see them poised to make runs deep into the NCAA championships next year. Well, they got some points for the Director's Cup. And before we get into the standings of it, I, I'd love to have you kind of break it down for people who don't understand what the Director's Cup is. Yeah, so the Director's Cup is um, 350 Division I programs. Um, it, they rank, you get points by how each of your programs finishes it nationally on an annual basis. So it really tells you that you have a broad-based, successful athletic program if you're in the top of the Learfield Director's Cup. Our highest finished until three years ago was 14th in the country and we'd done that and I think that was our only top 20 finish at the time. Uh, two years ago we finished 8th in the country. This past year we finished 7th and we'll end up 13th this year. Um, so our third highest finish ever in three years in a row we've had our top three finishes and it shows our success across all sports. And one caveat to the Learfield Directors Cup, it gives you an opportunity to, to measure how your top 20 sports finish we only have 19 sports, so we miss a metric to begin with that we don't have uh, added in. And so that's why a school like a Stanford finishes at the top most years because they sponsor 25 plus sports. And so their five, six, seven sports that finish lower in the NCAA rankings, they can just discard and only they take their top 20. And so um, if we like to claim that for schools that have 19 or fewer sports that we've been number one in the country in that metric because we miss a metric every okay. year. Okay, I did not know that. So how does a, a top 15 ranking like that impact this university and its athletic program? Well, I think not only does it impact the, this athletic program and the positive vibe that you see on the recruiting trails, but also when you talk about our university enrollment and that growth, as we've had top 10, now top 13 finishes, our enrollment has grown from 4,600 in our freshman class to last year's class was over 7,000, and we're anticipating another very strong class this year, and our admissions office will tell you that's the ESPN effect of the success of our athletic programs and the national notoriety that they're getting is attracting students from all over the country to come to the University of Arkansas. And you got some pretty impressive stats in the past five years for this athletics program as well. 31 conference titles. Yeah, we really hang our hat on that. And that's, you know, people say, well, that's your track and field program. It's not. That's 11 oh. different sports yeah. out of 19 programs that have won SEC championships in the last five years. Those 31 SEC championships, which I truly believe is the best athletic conference in the country, that's more than any other school in the SEC. We have 13 other schools we're competing against. We've won 31. There's some that have won none, some that have won fewer than five. I think Florida's in the 20s and the only other school that's in the 20s, and kudos to them as well. Uh, but we pride ourselves on all of our sports programs having the opportunity to have success and to compete for and win SEC championships. Yeah, you mentioned Florida, they're second at 25. So Arkansas has still got a solid lead in, in that aspect. And what even, I think a, that's a very proud subject, but then you compare that with their budget, ranks 10th in the SEC from a revenue standpoint, where, what we're able to invest in our sports programs and invest in our student athletes. And I think we're continuing to do more with less. And that's a tribute to our 15 head coaches, but it's a tribute to our 465 student athletes and really buying in to our athletic program and making the most of the opportunities that we create for them. Well, we'll wrap up with this. For four episodes now, we've gone through every sport on campus pretty much and, and the success that they've had. Where do you see this athletics department growing and, and going in the future? Well, it's only gonna get harder. When you talk about a year from now, we have the addition of Texas and Oklahoma. So we've got to continue to look at ways that we can improve uh, what we do, create more opportunities for our student athletes to have success and have them buy in and make the most of those opportunities. And so that's why we're looking at a major renovation to Bud Walton Arena, in addition to Bogle Park, in addition to our Razorback soccer facility, an enhancement to our, our tennis facility, enhancements to gymnastics and all the sports so that uh, we don't want to just rest on the great success we've had over the past three or four or five years. We want to continue to be successful, and move forward and be a leader in this conference. Well, we've got those two teams, like you mentioned, coming into the SEC. What are your thoughts on that real quick? Well, you think about what Texas and Oklahoma brings. I mean, you talk about 
Oklahoma softball program, their gymnastics program, Texas, you know, an incredible baseball program, their football program, their golf program, their swimming program. So they're just bringing more national championships and conference championships to this league. But it's really, I think it's so positive. Like our fans, I still think resonate that Texas is our biggest rival. Yeah. The fact that they're going to be coming back here in 2024 for the football season. We all remember that game a couple of years ago and how special that was for our student athletes and all of our fans. And um, Oklahoma is now the closest SEC campus to Fayetteville. And so I think we'll have some rivalries with, with Oklahoma. We've seen that in Tulsa with our men's basketball series that we started with them. So uh, they're bringing two really strong athletic programs and athletic brands to an already strong athletic conference. Well, thanks so much for sitting down with us and going through all of this. I think it was really insightful and it was great to hear from you about all of the success that the teams well, are having on campus. Well, thanks for having me and it's great to have you as a part of our team. Thank you so much and thank you all for watching.